again, Mark here from Talking Bass. This week we're having another look at the bass playing of Les Claypool. I've already covered a few Primus tunes like Tommy the Cat and American Life, and this week we're going to look at another classic Les riff from the song John the Fisherman. You can hear the original recordings on the Suck On This and Frizzle Fry albums, and it's a great example of his chord strumming technique. So we'll break down the main riff and I'll give you some technical tips to help with getting through the tune in one piece. As always, the tab and drum tracks are all there over at TalkingBass.net, just click the link in the info below. Also, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Then remember to check out the totally free membership over at Talking Bass. Talking Bass is now a complete social network for bass players. Just log in and you'll be able to connect with over 100,000 other bass players from all over the world in the forums, groups, and chat rooms. It's very much like Facebook, but for bass players, but with the addition of over 450 free bass lessons, a ton of free practice resources and a set of ebook downloads such as the Scale Reference Manual. Then if you want to take things further, there are the premium courses on everything from beginner bass to reading to scales, chord tones, slap bass, ear training and much much more. So sign up today, remember it's totally free and join a great bass community. Okay, so John the Fisherman is roughly around 115 beats per minute and the main riff sounds like this. First, let's look at the notes in there. We're in the key of C sharp minor and we start with this three chord move of B, C, and C sharp, okay? So you'll see this pattern all the way through the riff. It's basically a power chord. So it's root, fifth, and then we've got the octave on the top as well, octave of the root note. Okay, so the first one is B there. We've got second fret on the A string and then the fourth fret on the D and the G string. And I'm using the first finger and uh, the fourth finger or index and pinky to hold that down. But I will come back to that in a minute when I go through the uh, technical hurdles in here. So that's the chord, okay? And all we do is we take that chord and we move it up a fret and then another fret. So we've got B, C, and C sharp. And that's the first three chords. So those first three chords are strummed, and I'll come back to that technique in a minute. Then we switch to finger picking, and we have G sharp, open A, B, and then the C. So fourth fret on the E string, open A string, then second and third frets on the A string. So, okay. Then we move back into the strumming again. We start with a uh, with a, a set of ghost notes, really. So you just put the hand lightly across the strings and then strum. So we've got that down action. And then we have, we've got those three chords again. B, C, and C sharp. So all of that together. Okay, so that's the first part to get down. So it's also worth mentioning rhythmically when we start one and two and we come on in on the and of one. So one, two, and. Next we switch back to the finger picking again and have G sharp, B and C. So this is fourth fret E string, second fret and third fret on the A string. Then these two chords again. So it's just that power chord again, but this time on D fifth fret of the A string, so that's the D natural, and then down into the C sharp at the fourth fret where we started. So, okay, so. So let's put all of that together slowly. Three, four, one. Okay, so that's the whole of the riff. Again, one. and then we just loop it round. One. Okay. Okay, so that's the riff. Now let's look at some of the technical hurdles that you're going to run into. First up is the chording itself. These chords are very simple power chords, root, fifth, and the doubled root at the octave. And the most common way to play them is simply with the first and fourth fingers. So that's index and pinky, okay? Now some of you with a weak pinky might find the fingering a little tough on the hands, but there aren't really any good alternative options. You could try with your ring finger in 
place of the pinky. But I find that actually adds more stress in the hand because of the way the finger lays over the strings. You could also try a three finger shape using the index ring and pinky. But again, that's not a good option because when you uh, move up to the uh, up to this D and the D flat, it becomes really difficult to jump. So I strongly suggest just working on the index pinky fingering from the start. And if your hands aren't up to it, just take it slowly, building up the strength over time. And if you're a beginner, maybe leave this riff until your hands are a little more worn in. One of the other problems with playing these chords will be the soreness in that pinky. As you move these chords up and down the fretboard, you're gonna be basically rubbing that outer edge of the pinky along the rough string. And if you've never done anything like this before, you won't have any callus there. That means blisters. Now, as an indication of how this can impact on your playing, I recently cut my pinky on some glass. Not too bad, and it's actually healed up okay. But playing this riff in preparation for the video has actually opened the cut up again. So as you can see, I'm having to wear a band-aid to protect that sore area. So if you do blister up, just wait it out and then try again after the blisters have healed. Eventually, you'll get a callus build up and only then are you gonna be able to get through the entire song. In terms of the picking hand, we're moving between strumming and finger picking. For the strums, I tend to anchor my thumb on one of the strings or the body. You don't have to, but I find I can keep my bearings a little better when I do that. Les actually changes it up from time to time. On the original videos, you'll see him anchoring, and in later live videos, you'll see him in more of a free floating position. It makes absolutely no difference to the sound, so just go with what works for you. For the strumming itself, it's all alternate motion with the hand just opening and closing so that the nails strum along the strings back and forth. Then, of course, you do have the issue of jumping into the finger picking, so at that point, you just pull the thumb back onto the pickup or the body. It's probably a little odd at first, you know, if you're not used to those kind of strummed bass lines, but just practice, 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 and that switching between the two will eventually become second nature. As always, I've written some drum tracks for you to play along to. I've recorded them at 95, 105, and the original of 115 beats per minute. So let's first hear the riff at 95 beats per minute. Let's try 105 beats per minute. And finally, let's try 115 beats per minute. So that's John the Fisherman. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and follow the link below for more lessons and videos. Then sign up to the Talking Bass Network and membership to gain access to a massive community of like-minded bass players and a ton of bass practice resources and downloads. Okay, I'll see you next week.